We are Gold Ivy, a health company dedicated to simplifying health and wellness. Tune in as we search to find the deep, real, and raw truth. We're here to talk big, no room for small talk. It is our mission to inspire, seek growth, simplify the action steps, and build confidence. You decide what works for your daily life and how to transform our lessons into your gold. Are you ready to step into your power? Now is the time. Join us on the fearless pursuit of self-discovery and growth. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Something that has made a world of difference for us and many people we know over this past year has been getting our groceries delivered right to our door. The ability to get local, fresh groceries without us having to step foot into a grocery store has been something we are so grateful for. Convenience, price, and quality are extremely important to us, and that's why we love and support Instacart. Instacart can deliver to your front door in as little as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area to help you save money, and every item is hand-selected by shoppers based on your preferences. To start your 14-day free trial and to get free delivery on your first order over $35, follow the link in the show notes to let Instacart know that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store ever again. What comes to mind when you think of chiropractic care? For me, it was a big question mark. For Brooke, it has been a staple in her healing journey. We needed to clear up the misconceptions on chiropractic care. In this episode of Ivy Unleashed, we put Dr. Kayla Schumacher of Cairo Moms and Cairo Kids to work. Dr. Kayla is a doctor of chiropractic and functional medicine consultant. In this episode, you'll learn how chiropractic care supports the nervous system, why it's beneficial if you're not in pain, how it helps with allergies, how everyone can benefit from chiropractic care, even newborns and pregnant women. Can chiropractic care really be life-threatening? Tune in to hear Dr. Kayla's answer and for so much more. And now to this week's episode of Ivy Unleashed. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Ivy Unleashed. We have a very special guest today that I am so excited about because we're talking about a topic that we haven't really covered at all on this podcast. And I know nothing about it. (laughs) So welcome to Ivy Unleashed, Dr. Kayla Schumacher. Thank you for having me, ladies. I'm super excited to be here. Yes, and we are so excited to have you. Dr. Kayla is a chiropractor and a functional medicine consultant. And as people who are listening who are normal listeners, they know that I chiropractic has been a part of my healing journey, still is. But we haven't really talked about what it is, why it's so important, and it's another just realm of alternative medicine. And so, Dr. Kayla, I would love to know, just starting off the bat, like, why chiropractic for you? Yeah, I love that question because I've actually been seeing a chiropractor since I was five years old. My parents started us and I have a younger brother and sister and my brother had some stuff going on when he was about a year old. And so my parents just started us in that realm. And so we, yeah, we've just been, I've just been in that holistic world for my whole life, really. Funny enough, being that I'm at Cairo for Moms, I wanted to be an OBGYN and going through school it just really didn't seem right and so I'm kind of toying with the idea of like what do I do now and somebody was like why don't you be a chiropractor and I was like duh why don't I be a chiropractor (laughs) so here I am that's awesome well and I think too I mean chiropractic is just learning about it a little bit before this like it's there's so much involved with chiropractics and so can you just give our listeners especially those that don't know anything about it like What's all entailed with chiropractic care? Yeah, that's a great question because a lot of people think like it's just something that you have to continue to do for the rest of your life and you're just hooked kind of and there's no, it either works or it doesn't, right? And so chiropractic, really the focus of chiropractic is on the nervous system and really helping to support the nervous system. So when we do an adjustment, it's focusing on removing pressure from the nerve that goes to the muscle, the cell, the tissue, the organ system, um, and just allows it to information to get to where it needs to go so that your body can function and heal at 100%. 
Wow. I've never heard it explained that way. <laughs> wow. That, I mean, that's everything. That's mm-hmm. so important. And I think something I hear about a lot, especially in my neighborhood, there's a chiropractor in my neighborhood that everybody is obsessed with. They, Their kids go to her. Brooke goes to her. All my friends are going to her. And something that I always think is like, well, I don't have any chronic pain issues. So like, do I need to go to her? And so what would you say, you know, for someone that doesn't have like back pain right now, why it would be beneficial to go see your chiropractor? Unfortunately, that's where a lot of people get into chiropractic, right? Is because they have some sort of ailment or pain or whatever. So before I had my last son, I actually was at Cairo for mom full time. And then I switched over. We started Cairo for kids. Um, So I'm going to touch on Cairo for kids just a little bit too, because generally that's where we see our patient base that is there for straight wellness. They mom wants to get everybody checked out just to make sure that everything is functioning and healing. Because if we get that all checked out when they're that little, we're basically just starting them off on the right foot so that you know those ailments and those injuries and different health conditions that chiropractic is very successful with don't start so really it's just to check out the nervous system we're the experts there check out your spine make sure things are in a proper alignment with that we do a lot of muscle work tissue work stretches exercises so it's really a whole approach to wellness really is what somebody's looking for if they don't have a specific concern coming in. Yeah. And I'm curious just because of my own experience and I'd love to hear kind of your version of it. And just for our listeners to know too, is every time I get adjusted, right, it's different vertebrae. It's realigning the spine so that the nervous system can speak to each other and do its job. But how come it doesn't stay in one place, right? Like each time I'm coming back, it's getting readjusted. It's getting readjusted. Why isn't it just kind of a one and done? Like, why is it that it keeps getting out of alignment? It's, I, it's kind of a corny analogy, but it works. It's like braces, right? We don't wear braces for a day and expect those bones, our teeth to stay. We wear braces for what, two years? I never had braces, thankfully. (laughs) But we wear braces for two years, right? And so really with chiropractic, the goal though is that, yes, maybe initially on the front end, you might come back a little bit more often, maybe. But really, like I'm going to speak to the kids because this is a little bit easier uh, for people to understand with the kids is sports, right? So let's let's just talk football, for instance, just because it's a high impact sport. You're getting, you're taking those hits. Your your body is constantly having that trauma. I mean, good or bad, it's trauma. Um, And so things are going out of place. Muscles are getting tight. You're doing workouts. Um, So kind of like us with everyday living too, there's people that sleep wrong. You know, they slept in their belly and their head was turned all night one way. Kids take falls off their bikes. We garden. We do these daily living activities that can cause those vertebrae to go out of alignment. Car accidents, you know, like I said, different traumas, not necessarily bad trauma. And yeah, and and the goal for us anyways, is that we can help your body to maintain that position so that you don't have to come back three times a week or every single week. Now, I will say a lot of people get hooked on it. And, you know, we I've had, for the first time ever in practice, I've had to say, you don't have to come back every week. It's okay. Let's let your body work, adapt, and be able to hold that adjustment longer. And with that comes some of the exercise that we do, the muscle work that we do. Um, There's a few other things that we can do too to help your body maintain that. Yeah. Something that comes to mind too is just that check-in with your body. I think we go through life so quick, fast. I mean, I just had a winter weekend and I just got I fell ice skating like three times. So, you know, life happens and then we get busy and we're not in tune with what our body needs. I think, you know, something I think about is yoga. You know, once you slow down and take time to think about like what feels tight, what could use some attention. I feel like chiropractic sounds kind of like that where you could have, you know, your chiropractor saying, wow, did you notice that your hamstrings are super tight? Like that might be why your back is hurting or, you know, it might just be kind of awareness of your body and where you're holding some tension. 
Absolutely. And too, you know, well, we can talk about this too down the road too, but pregnancy, look at all the changes that your body is making to literally grow another human and through each stage of pregnancy. Um, and it's just, it's that stressor on your body for sure. Yeah. And Cairo for moms, Cairo for kids, like we'll definitely talk about your work with pregnancy and postpartum. But before we jump into that, I would love to talk about kind of the misconceptions, right? I think people, they think about chiropractic and they've never done it before. Like Andrea, you know, her fear is, are they going to snap me wrong? Am I going to have a stroke? Like there's so many horror stories. And then you think about a pregnant woman getting snapped. Like it's, uh, and so I'm sure you've heard all of the things about people coming in and they they just need some relief, but they're terrified. And so what are some of those big misconceptions that you've heard and why are they misconceptions? Yeah, <clears throat> that's a really good question. And honestly, I always tell people who have come for the first time, like I love first timers, but because I've been going to a chiropractor for almost 30 years and I've been adjusted by so many chiropractors, I mean, even students. So I love sharing about that because the, one of the first misconceptions that comes to mind right away is that you have to go for the rest of your life. Like you don't have to, if you don't want to, that's fine. You don't have to go to the dentist for the rest of your life. You don't have to go to the doctor for the rest of your life. Like you can do what you want. Everybody chooses their own path. But again, kind of like what we just talked about, the different stressors that affect our body, that's one way to, one way that people implement health into their life from a more holistic standpoint. So you don't have to go. You don't even have to go three times a week. I've been in that realm of chiropractic and it's so refreshing to be able to guide you and help you determine when you need to come back as well. Yes, we're still the doctor, but a big part of your care is how you feel and what you think you need as well. The other thing is the snapping, right? The approach that we take at Cairo for Moms and with Cairo for Kids, um, kids is a whole nother, kind of a whole nother conversation. But with Cairo for Moms is the way that we do the adjustment is not so much that rotation, that snapping, that turning, but more of the lateral flexion and then the adjustment. And the lateral flexion takes away that component of the vertebral artery dissection. Okay. Does it happen? Yes about a, that somebody could have a stroke. What I have seen in my study with that specifically is that there are underlying causes and under underlying issues. So it wasn't the chiropractic adjustment that actually caused that dissection. Something else was going on. And you have to really, really do a very hard, aggressive adjustment for that to happen. We don't do that. And especially with pregnancy, because in pregnancy, your joints are so lax anyways, that what we do with the adjustment, we take out almost all the rotation. And we have we have other measures that we can, other things that we can use. We use an activator if some, if we can't gauge really where somebody's end feel is for that adjustment. So we know where to stop. So you have to be very aggressive for that. I think that's the biggest thing with people. Um, the other thing is people hear that cracking, right? So the cracking is louder in the neck because your ears are right there. It's the same sound in your low back, your mid back, kind of like when you crack your knuckles. It's the same thing. It's the gas being released between the joints. And that's why you hear it louder in your neck is because your ears are right there. I love that you mentioned the activator because that's something that my chiropractor uses on me because of the neck adjustment. It freaks me out. I have TMJ and my neck is it's just always tight. And so that quick adjustment freaks me out. And so knowing that there's other ways to relieve that tension to get those vertebrae back in alignment and the activator, it's like, how would you explain it for people who don't know what that is? Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah, so it's more of a, you get, you can get directly on the point of contact that you want to adjust very specifically. And then we push the activator and it, it holds right in our hand. So it's a smaller tool, but it gets very specific point on the body. Um, and it's more of a click and we can adjust the pressure that we use. So for an adult versus a child or even different areas on the body. Um, and it, 
allows us to do the adjustment that way without having to work through so much of that muscle barrier. So like you said, when you get tight, you tense up and then that adjustment is a little bit more forceful. Yeah. Yeah. I just like listeners to know, cause I personally, when I realized that there was different options out there than being, you know, snapped back into place per se, like it made right. me more comfortable. It, it, it was just knowing that there's options out there to get the same end result was kind of comforting for me to know. And, you know, I went for healing when it came to like parasites and my immune system. And it wasn't for specific chronic pain after a car accident. And so can you kind of touch on how it's supportive for a plethora of different things like the immune system or allergies, allergies, chronic pain, kind of maybe clients you've had who just have a range of different symptoms and how it can just helps the body heal on its own in a way. Absolutely. It's interesting too, because we, the other docs and I at the office, we kind of just said like, why don't we talk more about how it supports the nervous system? Like that's really what we're doing, right? We're huge on social media. We have a large social media presence and we don't really talk about it supporting the immune system that well. We talk about it more supporting the nervous system, but the reality is, is that your ner- your immune system runs right along your spinal cord and about 70% of your immune system is in your digestive system, in your gut. And so every time you're getting adjusted, you're literally boosting that immune system because you're supporting the nervous system. You're adjusting the spine, which is, you know, giving off all these receptors and hormones and really just freeing up that nerve to get information to where it needs to go. So one of the things that um, we focus on really big or, or one of the big um, concerns is digestion, with, especially with kids too, because that's one of the things that parents notice mostly. I always say after I adjust a little, I'm like, okay, you're going to, you could potentially notice increased sleep, just working on those receptors, those hormones and increased digestion. That's a normal thing. And really the, the reality is that we're just removing the pressure from that digestive system so that everything can function and heal. Um, which equals increased bowels and normal bowels. You know, you might have increased initially because you're getting rid of the toxins, that immune system is kind of flushing everything out. So just overall immune support for colds, headaches, sinuses, that kind of thing. Um, Chiropractic is great for ear infection. When you adjust the neck, you're removing pressure. Those same nerves that come from your neck down out your arms, your hands, down your spine, actually wrap around and go back into your head and control your eyes, ears, nose, throat. Um, there's a couple of other techniques that we do to help with drainage, too, for the, the fluid of the ear, even from the nasal passage. And then for a lot of women, because we are wide rate, we have a wide clientele or a patient base of pregnant women, a lot of sciatica, we're really just supporting the hips, making sure the pelvis is in proper alignment in that neutral position so baby has room to grow, And with that comes a lot of sciatic issues. So we do a lot of muscle work on the sciatic nerve, the piriformis, the psoas, all kind of pertaining to the hip. Torticollis is another big one on both sides that we see. So torticollis usually presents as a lateral flexion and a rotation component. And we do a lot of muscle work to loosen up the muscles of the neck and into the shoulder um, and then with that adjustment too, we have a lot of, chiropractic is, has a lot of success for that. Those are kind of the big ones. My brain right now goes to pediatrics because that's where I've been for so long, but a lot of yeah, headaches in chiropr- um, chiropractic is great for just moving the pressure again from the nerves, low back pain, a lot of neck tension, especially for women. We hold a lot of our stress right here in the base of our neck and our shoulders. We do a lot of a lot of um, attention to detail through there too. I love what you were saying about how it's giving your body like more information, space for information to spread. Like it's tight, it there's tension, mm-hmm. it's locked up, and you're almost like helping. It's like it's if you know that how the body works better, yeah. like it's of course it's going to be more helpful that way. And that that makes so much sense to me to hear it that way. And kind of how I view it or did and and you totally just confirmed it Dr. Kayla is 
that given the right environment, like your body will thrive, right? It's resilient, but the norm is to be so tense and locked up and it's foreign to like, what do you mean the body's relaxed? And it just kind of does what it needs to do. And with functional medicine, that's really my, been my experience is given the right environment, you can thrive. It may take some adjustment, some getting in alignment at first, but your body will recognize that it's this new norm. It's all, it's just funny to me how not being in alignment is the norm. Like being in pain is normal. And then you have, you explain functional care, you explain chiropractic as one element of functional medicine or holistic medicine. And it's just another way to allow your body to be in that environment. Mm -hmm. Um, And and I know Kayla, you are also a functional medicine consultant. So I'd love for you to touch on your role role with that and kind of what that looks like with your patients. Yeah. So it was, I think it was like right when I started chiropractic school, I started just the normal stuff of chiropractic school. It was super intense, long hours, all of that. And again, I had been getting adjusted my whole life. I, I took so many supplements all my life. Just, you know, I think I remember going to the doctor one time for strep and it was literally because my throat was burning and I couldn't talk. And But my the chiropractor that we were with never addressed any blood work or lab work. And so I think it wasn't until when I started school, I was like, gosh, like there has to be something else missing here. And... Yes, the adjustment is amazing for the body. It does a lot of people good, and that's all they need. But that wasn't my case. And and so I just knew, too, like, after, you know, that's kind of where I started. And then once I was through school, I was like, I'm seeing all these patients. I'm adjusting them. I'm adjusting some of them three times a week. But, like, they're not getting better. So what's the missing link here? And the reality is, is, you know, when we talk about functional medicine, your blood work is exactly what's going on with you at the current moment, like nothing else gets a more clear picture, but it's really what we do with that information. Um, and so with the functional medicine that I do, everybody, I do a baseline test on all my clients and it's really building the foundation. It's assessing their environment. You can't be breathing toxic air and expect to create health within your body. It doesn't matter all the organic foods you're eating, all of the acupuncture, chiropractic massage, all the things you're doing, if you're breathing toxic air, if you're drinking water that has chemicals in it, some of these things, you know, all of the EMS that we see now, the electromagnetic frequencies, artificial light. I mean, look at all of the, you know, we're indoors with our, all the artificial light sources. And so I really started diving into that and was like, okay, this is what we need. And I think the most frustrating part for functional medicine for me and for clients is that it's not just a, well, what do you take for this? What do you do for this? Like all these, you know, I I like to say all these sexy supplements because what's the newest one that this doctor or this health food blogger or this person has to say, it's really, this is what your body needs. This is your biochemical individuality. And you have to do some work. You have to put in the work to really build a strong foundation. Yeah, I'm curious about, your first appointment with someone. I feel like you probably have 3,000 questions you need to ask them, <laughs> which is nice because I can already feel that you're very detailed with your client's health. But can you kind of walk us through what that first appointment is like for someone coming in and maybe they have a small issue, maybe they don't. And just to get that full picture of their health, what that's like with you. Yeah, so all the functional medicine that I do is outside of the office. So everything I do with functional medicine is virtual. So I first do a free discovery call with all my potential clients and just really lay it out there. Tell me what's going on. What are your concerns? What do you like? What do you really just want to get rid of? What are the top three things that just aren't working for you that are limiting you from being able to, you know, run around with your kids or enjoy doing your hobbies and things like that? Um, and then from there, we do a case review. So I, we do a comprehensive case review where we talk about all the things that, you know, basically your past health history, current health history, what are some factors that could be indicative of certain markers on your lab exam. And then we move forward with um, a lab called the Nutribal Plasma 
It gets sent directly to you. I help you find a lab in your area. There's a great one in Plymouth that um, is awesome to work with. You draw, they draw your blood. They send the kit out for you. And then once I get the results back, we go over the results and we come up with a plan and see what's going on. Love it. Mm-hmm. Sounds like my my experience with my functional practitioner. I'm curious what the specific tests you do, what that all tests for. Yep. So it looks at your antioxidant, nutrient, um, vitamin markers. So what supplements do you need? Like, are you taking a B vitamin just because it sounds good? Are you taking zinc? Are you taking vitamin C because it's COVID um, and you think that's what your body needs? And are you actually hurting your body by taking those and driving up other markers? Um, And then it also tells your metabolic status. So what percentage of protein, fat, and carbs does your body need to balance things out or just really to support your biochemical individuality at this point? So if someone like me who doesn't have any health issues right now wanted to hire you to just know this information, I feel like this is valuable not being sick. (laughs) Like, I feel like I want to just do this to see where I line up. But what I'm thinking about is how is that different? I already know some things that are different, but how is that different than going to, you know, traditional medicine? How are your tests different and how do you know what those levels need to be versus what their levels would be to see if there's something off? That's a great question. So the biggest thing with functional medicine is that I work with a whole systems approach. So I'm doing this test and I'm looking at everything. I don't just see, yep, your one B vitamin is off, so we're going to supplement you with a B. I look at every area on this test and associate it back around to, okay, well, maybe this is off because let's look further down on the test. Oh, this is off. This pathway, there's a connection missing here. That's what's driving this up. So it's really a whole systems approach, everything together, and I'm not just going to throw a supplement at you. I'm going to say, let's focus on, you know, unless there's a marker that is really warrants a supplement, but it's really going to be about your food. I like to get everything for free. So if we can drive these markers up or down based on your metabolic status and the way that you should be eating, awesome. Um, But yeah, that's the biggest one is, you know, we're not going in looking at just a cardiac panel. We're not looking at just your thyroid. And, you know, honestly, when I did this test, I did, I did it when I was pregnant because I wanted to know, that's the biggest question that I get is what prenatal should I take? I don't know. And, and it's, that's the, the, that answer right there is so hard for me because I'm very much like, well, what do I need to do? Like, just tell me what I need to take. Like, let's just do this because I hate taking supplements. But when I did this test when I was pregnant, it was these two markers were off and I wasn't eating enough protein. So I never took a prenatal. It was what my body needed while I was pregnant. So I think that's the kind of the biggest light bulb for me was when I figured that out. Um, so I also work with a mentor that I hired um, a couple of years ago who's been doing this for 30 years. So I go over a lot of my lab tests with him still because I am I mean, I've only been doing this for a couple of years, so I like to just have another set of eyes and more experience, too. So I go over um, with my mentor uh, most of my labs. But, yeah, the the pregnancy piece was the biggest kind of click for me, and, like, and it worked. Like, let's, let's look at, instead of just taking a prenatal that's a general prenatal for everybody, let's see what your body actually needs. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's body is so different. Like you said, bio-individuality. Like what are you even absorbing, right? With these supplements that you take. And I had done a, a similar test, but it was a hair test and it showed that my potassium was super low. And I just ate a crap ton of potassium for a couple of weeks. And sure enough, I felt better. And, you know, instead of just throwing a pill at me, it was working with a practitioner one-on-one to say, why is your potassium low? Oh, because I had all these parasites and these issues that were robbing me of my body's ability to absorb the potassium that I was eating. And so I think looking at where you are, that baseline, but then also the why is it low so that in a year you're not right where you started. You have that that understanding and you know why what you're putting in your body and why. 
it can be really confusing. It can be really overwhelming. And so I think that's also why it's important to work with a practitioner who has your information and can explain it to you in a way that's like, oh, okay, this does make sense. I do think the difference though in what you're saying is you're kind of breaking apart another misconception. A lot of people think that functional practitioners want to sell you the supplements because mm. it's how they get you the money. And you're saying from your own experience that you your body more efficiently absorbs food than anything, you know, than taking any pill or supplement. And you're saying personally, you didn't want to take supplements if you didn't have to, and you don't like to prescribe them if you don't have to. So could you just talk a little bit more about that misconception and kind of how you practice and how that's different than what most people think? Like, let's say like with the parasite, for instance. Okay, so you go, you go to your regular doctor, which again, nothing against them. There's a very much a time and a place, right? But let's put you on this medication and if that doesn't work we're going to switch you and then we're going to switch you and then we're going to switch you until we just we get rid of it or it goes away so it's just a medicine can right and what i've seen in functional medicine and what i've personally done in the past before i found my current mentor is most functional medicine clinicians just have a alternative medicine cabinet they just have a supplement cabinet and i think what finally woke me up a little bit to what was happening like you guys are going to die when i tell you this but i took from the chiropractor growing up, I think I was in chiropractic school uh, or right before I started, I took, I was taking 90, 90 supplements a day for one program. And he did it a little different. He likes to fast track, like, let's just throw it all at you, get rid of it versus like slowly. And I did that, like, this is going to sound, make me sound absolutely crazy, but I mean, I'm super real and transparent. I did that nine times for digestive issues. And I think I lost like 10 pounds that summer. But again, like all I was consuming were supplements, right? And that's kind of when I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm done with this. And now I take zero supplements. <laughs> but that's, what, that's where my body's at right now. And so I really think that you have to be patient in the holistic realm. Like you really have to be patient. And it's just a matter of the bare necessities and getting the rest of it from food because we're eating anyway. So why would we not want to just increase certain foods to really compensate for where your body's at? What I think you, I kind of like diverted from that question a little bit, but <laughs> I just get so passionate about that because I have people all the time that are like, well, what, what should I take for this? What should I take for that? And I'm like, I don't know, like what's going on. And I've gotten to the point where I'm okay with that. I'm okay with, people walking away because they just want a quick fix because that's that's not what not what I'm about. So going from 90 supplements a day to now you don't take any. <laughs> obviously a lot of work was done in the interim of that. Like did you finally find a test that is similar to what you do now with your patients where you know where you're at and then you kind of load up with food or you know, if, if you can sum up what that work looked like in the middle, just for people who maybe don't want to be on a bunch of supplements, but know that they need a little help and patience before they can get to a point where they don't have to take anything. When I got into chiropractic school, that was the first time that I really focused on, I mean, I always ate healthy, you know, whatever that meant, right? You know, I wasn't eating a ton of sugar, soda, like all that. It was, you know, a lot of fresh foods and vegetables and all whatever, but it wasn't really until I just kind of did like, kind of did like an overhaul. Like I cut out, so like just cut out stuff. And I, I'm not even going to say what I all did with diet because that's not what I would recommend to my patients now, but really kind of changed that. And then I found a functional medicine doc who could, because functional medicine really has kind of just evolved in chiropractic. They're kind of going hand in hand. More chiropractors are starting to get into functional medicine now than ever before. So a chiropractor that I knew who was who had a successful functional medicine practice, I did some testing with him and it was a little bit more supplement based, not a ton, but I, I that's kind of where I did the overhaul for functional medicine. And then that's kind of where I also looked at like, it's not really from a diet standpoint, it's not a one size fits all plan. Even if I recommend that you're eating a percentage of protein, fat and carbs, like both of you, if I recommended, you know, your lab test came back and you were a certain type of, had a certain type of metabolic status, it was the same, it would still be different because we have to look at other things. Like one may need to decrease nuts and seeds. One may need to add in more seafood, you know, that kind of thing. 
Um, so that's really where I was like, well, this still doesn't like, I'm still not getting my patients well, like to where I could be. Like I wanted more, I wanted more detail. I wanted everything to be super individualized and unique to that specific person. And so that's where I was like, you know, what? I'm done with finding somebody who is a chiropractor because I need somebody who has other experience outside of chiropractic that has just a, you know, a different knowledge base. Um, so that's where I found my current mentor. I actually found him through a nurse practitioner friend. Yeah. And so now that's where I am. And I, I love it. It's, it just, it's a lot of work for a client, but that's why you hire me. <laughs> that's, you know, that's really just that, you know, I'm there with you every step of the way that accountability essentially. Yeah. And I love how you can get tested at different seasons of life, right? Like you mentioned when you were pregnant and speaking of pregnancy, your work, you know, you work with peds now, but Cairo for moms, the clinic you work at, you do prenatal, postpartum, pediatric care. Uh, and I'm curious like, why it's important in each stage to get chiropractic work done. Uh, and also what people can expect if they do work with you or one of the other docs at the clinic. Yeah, so we are all certified in what we call the Webster Technique, and that's specific to pregnancy. Um, the Webster Technique helps to neutralize the pelvis so that baby has the amount of room they need for labor and delivery, basically. Um, it's also, most people listening have probably heard it as a way to help reposition a breech baby, but it's really just focusing on the pelvis. So right there, that is, you know, I could be done talking about it right there but for pregnancy, but also just to help to really relieve lo any low back pain. Our docs do such an amazing job. And I personally, um, I have had, I had my third boy almost a year ago and it was the first time I had a lot of back sciatica piriformis stuff. And it's just the way that it helps to support your body through that. Um, we do a lot of diaphragm work, round ligament component there, stretching exercises. So really just to support the body through that process. The goal is to help make an easier transition for labor and delivery. And then postpartum wise, we usually have, we usually say when you're ready to come back for the adjustment um, or for an adjustment after baby, usually I would say within a month to six weeks, kind of when mom's just feeling ready, it's all up to you. Um, but really just your body went through a lot delivering a baby. So just all that tension, that stress. So it just helps to support Again, the nervous system um, helps to just really allow the body to be back in proper position so that those muscles can relax through there and really not have that all that tension. Um, and then throughout childhood, we love checking newborns just to make sure that, you know, they just went through a big trauma themselves, good or bad, and really just checking their nervous system to make sure that they're off to a great start. Yeah. I love thinking about that. And I, I'm thinking of myself like, wow, my body did go through a lot. Like, but my mind went to massage. And so I would get, I got a massage like a month after each, each child or each delivery. And so I'm curious the difference between, you know, that benefit and how it probably would have been more beneficial for me to do both. So can you guys like touch on that after your body's been through something, how massage and chiropractor could kind of work together or what you would say, do this first or do this second? Yeah, well, I can attest to that too because this was the first time in pregnancy where the adjustment wasn't the only thing that I had to do to get out of pain. I had to get a massage like every couple weeks just because I had crazy piriformis stuff going on. From again, from my standpoint, bone is stronger than muscle. So if you have, if your spine is out of alignment, you're you can get a massage all day long. You can go every week if you want to. But that bone is not allowing that muscle to lay in the proper position and be relaxed. So adjustment, massage goes super hand in hand. And again, we do a ton of massage work, deep tissue work at the office too, and kind of show you different techniques and ways that you can do some of this stuff at home too. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a time and a place that massage is warranted. But the adjustment is really making sure that that spine is in proper position so that those muscles have a place to go. That makes perfect sense. And I, what I keep thinking about is the resistance and, and it might be just generalizing because this is my experience in my life, but I have this resistance to chiropractic over massage. Like massage is way more socially acceptable to just go get a massage whenever. Like what's your take on why people are so resistant to chiropractic care? Because a massage feels good. <laughs> I 
I mean, I would love, like, I could lay and get a massage all day long. But I think that it's one of those things. And, you know, it's kind of a hard question for me because I've been going to a chiropractor for almost 30 years. And so I think that it's, it's not always that for people who are a little bit more hesitant, it's not, I think it's that lack of that hormone response where like the endorphins are kicking in and you get up and you're instantly feeling better. That's not always the case. It can take a little bit of time. And where that massage, people are relaxed. You know, they're laying there for 30 to 60 minutes, 90 minutes, whatever it may be. But I will say our appointments at Cairo for Moms, it's not just come in, rack them, crack them, you're out the door. You're spending at least 20 minutes in our office. And we're doing massage work before. We're, you, we use hot stones before to really relax. Then we work on immobilizing, moving that joint. And then it's really exercises on how to retrain, how to heal, how to stretch out so that you do feel good. Yeah, it's not that quick fix where, like like you said, after a massage, oh, I feel so good. But then how long after a massage do you just go right back to, you know, yeah. once those endorphins, like you'd mentioned, Dr. Kayla, once those endorphins wear off, then you're like, oh, I can't wait for my next massage. Yeah, I think, too, we just had two different experiences growing up. Like you, mm -hmm. it, it was part of your life, and I think... The majority of people that I know, it, it wasn't, you know, and I don't know if it's like a small town thing or what, but it was kind of like, oh, no, you could get seriously injured if they do it wrong. Or like, why would you ever take a baby to a chiropractor? Everything's so little. That's so dangerous. And so I've always had that misconception of it's super dangerous and that bad things can happen. It's like, I feel like I heard a lot of horror stories more than seeing people go on a regular basis. You know, there was one chiropractor in my town mm -hmm. and not anybody in my family went on a regular basis. So I think we just have two different experiences. And I, I love that you're talking through the benefits and how everybody could really use it. Yeah, it's, I think it's confirmation bias, right? You have a good experience with it. You have your personal experience or you heard through the grapevine that so-and-so had an awful experience. That one experience or that one story sticks with you because it's our bodies and brains job to protect us. And then until you need it for yourself, you know, maybe one day, hopefully not, but down the road, you have chronic pain or you just are open. You have a different mindset around it. You learn more about it. And I don't know, everyone has their own willingness, but also desire and what you have to want to try to do it. Right. You know, you don't really have a need to do it or maybe down the road you will. Yeah. And I think too, that you know, unfortunately, in chiropractic, you know, again, like you said, if you either, you've either done it and you like it or you haven't done it because you don't know anything about it, right? But well, I think from the Cairo for Kids standpoint, with a lot of moms with little, like little, little babies, they're colicky, they're fussy, they're, they cry all the time, they're not sleeping. So we're the last resort. And I think that for me in this profession is it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's what keeps me going in this profession, but it's also super frustrating and it's, it's what beats us down a little bit because you don't know, I, I think you don't know what you're missing until you, like you said, you have something wrong or something that the other side of medicine isn't correcting and isn't able to help with. I can't tell you how many times I have a mom who brings in a fussy baby and the next day that, or the next time they come in, they're like, what did you do? Because I have a whole new child, you know? And so it's kind of one of those things where like, I, I get terrified of having to go to the doctor because I've never been in that realm. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's just, you don't, sometimes you don't know what you're missing until you have no other option. Yeah. And I'm in that boat right now. I'm going to use my chiropractor starting <clears throat> right now to have my son go for allergies. So I want to I want to hear your take on this too because I am, am one of those people. Last resort, he suffers every year, every May. It's terrible. And my neighborhood chiropractor is like, January, start him with me. And I promise you by the time May rolls around, Mother's Day, he will not be blotchy. He will be in a much better spot. So could you touch on allergies for kids and for grownups and how chiropractic plays into that? Yeah, again, it's really just about supporting the nervous system. Like, and I, I say that like so lightly, but you remove the interference. You know, maybe he has some stuff going on in his neck that those nerves that go back into your head and control your eyes, your ears, your nose, your throat, 
aren't functioning properly. And he has a misalignment there. It's putting pressure on those nerves. Clear that up. See what happens. There are, you know, other factors to allergies. Are they a real thing? Yes. But I, w- I would say that the goal for him in chiropractic would be to lessen the severity of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I'll report back. I'm so pumped because he, he's miserable. Like it's it's hard and it affects his sleep and it affects everything. And so something I'm going to see if it helps his sleep too, because I'm excited because of course it wakes him up. He's congested and itchy and all of those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm excited for him to start at this age and it's all about experimenting. Like you don't know him until you try. Mm-hmm. And I love all of your nuggets of wisdom, Dr. Kayla. And, you know, for people listening who don't have access to you physically or Cairo for moms, but are loving this and want more of you, you guys at the clinic have an amazing Instagram where you have such good wisdom. You have a podcast of your own and a blog. And so I'd love for you to touch on where people can find you and what they can, you know, what they can find if they look at these things. Yeah, so we're in Wyzetta, if you are local to the Twin Cities. Um, but yeah, we are at Cairo underscore four underscore mom on Instagram. And then same thing with Cairo underscore four underscore kids. And our goal is just to educate. <clears throat> that was really kind of where we started. We have an amazing website as well that we are all the docs, the interns, our office manager, Everybody is always paying attention to our website and updating it on the daily. It's for education. We also have a really awesome course. There's information on our website about that too. Postpartum, prenatal, pediatric course where we've interviewed a dozen different MDs, OBs, pediatricians, NPs, pediatric dentists. So every topic that you can imagine. Um, but that's really just, that's really our passion is just to educate. Yeah. So Instagram is um, kind of, one of those things for us that we are always on. And then I am at Dr. Kayla Schumacher on Instagram. So Awesome. Well, I am so excited to plug all of this in our show notes, in our blog, so that selfishly we can look at it. Yes. <laughs> and we, we are so grateful for you, for your time, and for everyone listening to gain access to you and your team's amazing work. Yes. And I just want to say, too, that I think it's so important what you just said about information. Like, why not just gather more information? I think we have this resistance to something that's new mm-hmm. because we have a lack of knowledge, right? Or we heard something, and I'm living proof of it. Like, I am a marathoner and I've had kids. Why have I not tried this out just to see if my body could feel better? And I, I love that you're network, networking with all different types of specialists so that you can all bounce your information off each other so you can help more people. So thank you so much, like Brooke said, for your work and your podcast. I love it. I love how you have so many different topics. It's just, it's awesome. Thank you guys for having us. And, you know, really, I speak for everybody at our office too. And I think that the la- one of the last things I want to say, too, is that chiropractic has a lot of misconceptions, you know, and that's every profession, but there's zero pressure at our office. It's, you can't come to your appointment, you call us and let us know, because most of us are moms, we have kids, we understand. It's, you don't want to come into the office because whatever, like, don't. And you don't have to come back all the time. We love having you, but it's really just this place that I found that I took my own child to that I didn't know how to do an adjustment. And I saw Dr. Jesse show it on Instagram and I was like, I need to learn that. And I need that done. And she, a week later asked me if I wanted to work there and I wasn't looking for a job. (laughs) So it's really just this community of education and of women and there's no ego. And we, you know, one of the things I love is that we do reach out to pediatricians. We reach out to OBs, physical therapists. It takes a whole network and it takes a whole approach for health and we, we want the best for you. And so that's really where our Instagram is coming from too, is that we just want you to be successful in whatever health journey you have. I love that. That's beautiful. And you make really fun TikToks and reels sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, Dr. Carol, we wrap up every show with our three gold stars. These are our small action steps, our key takeaways that you would like to share with our listeners. So if you would like to give your three stars, go ahead. Yes, I love that. So the first one I would say is kind of what we just talked about. You can never have too much information regarding your health. So whether it's functional medicine, whether it's chiropractic, 
take the first step and just don't be afraid because whether it's chiropractic or functional medicine, we're there for you every step of the way. You're not alone. The other one I would say is if you haven't tried chiropractic, and I'm going to speak more for the pregnancy side, it's an amazing time to try chiropractic and as a newborn too. Just let you, you know, get your child started off on the right foot with the craniosacral therapy. You, you're not alone in your child crying a lot. Um, those newborn days are very hard, but just, you know, get another perspective than just the pediatrician saying it's normal or it's colic or it's reflux or whatever it may be. Um, and the last thing I would say is have fun with it. Um, health can really be fun. Like, I feel like we are a lot of, and I feel like you guys might be this way too. Uh, we are health geeks. Like we're kind of nerds. Like we'll try anything. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, we probably had fun trying it along the way. So just really just take some step, especially in today's world. We don't know what, what we're up against. And you just really want the best self-defense that you can have. Yeah. And having fun and enjoying things, it's good for your immune system. It's good for your health. Mm -hmm. And if you're not enjoying it, why are you doing it? Yeah. And something too to think about is like, how good can I feel? Mm -hmm. If I haven't tried this, like, could I feel better? Like, why not just test it out? I love that idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And next we have unleashing IV, which are the surprise questions. Dr. Kayla has no idea we're about to ask her. Are you ready? I'm ready. (laughs) All right. What is your favorite client success story? Oh, okay. I have two. Functional medicine side is a client telling me that they were able to get pregnant when they hadn't in the past. So super exciting. And I would say in, I'm going to speak to the pediatric side just because that's what I'm in. Babies who really, really struggle nursing and they do a lip or a tongue tie revision and mom comes back. Um, I just had this. Well, I had this all the time now. I had a mom who was really struggling. Baby was so much reflux. Like, they could hold it in their hand. Super colicky, uncomfortable baby. Had the lip and tongue tie revision. And mom came back and was like, I am so upset that I did not try this sooner. And I'm just the advocacy that we gave that mom is amazing. How do you fix a tongue tie? I'm so curious. What is a tongue tie? <laughs> so every, so it's. Um, the frenum that we have from up here to your lip. So I'll actually, I'll show you right here. This frenum here that goes, that attaches to your gum. Um, and then under your tongue too, we all have a frenum. So we're all born with a tie. It's just a matter of if it affects anything. And usually what we find in babies is nursing or latching issues, super painful nursing for mom and a lot of reflux and colic. So baby can't get a proper seal um, nursing or bottle feeding. So they take in too much air belly fills with air, they get super colicky, reflux. So we can assess that and then refer to a pediatric dentist where they do a revision with a col- with a laser. And it basically shortens that frenum and gives the tongue or the lip more mobility to be able to nurse. That's awesome. That's I think so So many moms are like, I'm doing it wrong. And because breastfeeding is just hard, even if it goes well, like they're eating, it's painful, <laughs> it's hard, it's commitment, it's patience, it's the biggest test I've ever had when it comes to having a newborn is figuring that out. But then to feel like, oh my gosh, there's an answer. I feel like that's probably something that you're talking about. You're the last resort. And you're like, oh, if you would have just came to me sooner because people go through months of torture until they find someone that can help them with that. Yeah. It's probably one of the things that I see the most in our practice. Honestly, it's a kind of a blessing and a curse. It's just really You just feel so much, especially as a mom, and I've gone through it with two out of my three, just the struggle and the wanting to quit, but wanting to nurse so bad. Um, And just that that result that they get is there is nothing like it. And for our podcast listeners um, that want to hear Kyle for Moms podcast, there's an episode on that too, where a mom talks about her personal experience struggling and it was a, a beautiful episode. All right, next question. If you weren't a functional medicine consultant or chiropractor, what would you be? So I said I wanted to be an OBGYN initially. And I think especially working with so many pregnant women and the OBs and all the babies, I think that's what I would, I think I'm going to go back to that. 
Yeah. Do you, could you see yourself ever going back to school and just being like, okay, I'll deliver your babies. I'll help you with lactation. <laughs> I'll be your lactation consultant. I'll adjust your children and then I'll do your blood work. And then you just really be a one stop. <laughs> right. I think if I was like 10 years younger, maybe, <laughs> uh, no, because that's a really good question because what I love about what we do is we are experts in our field because that's all we do. We don't do everything in chiropractic and we don't say that we do everything in chiropractic. We have our niche and we have our specialty and that's what we stick to and that's what we're really good at. So we don't even talk about functional medicine really in the office. It's more of a, here's resources for that. We don't even sell, we sell nothing in the office, no supplements, nothing like that, because that's not, that's not our focus. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And you invite other people. And I think just speaks that there's room for everyone and everyone's expertise and their niche and just how much better it is when everyone can come together and put their input and it goes back to that importance of that importance of just educating yourself. And as someone who isn't a mom and I hear talking about tongue ties and breastfeeding and I'm listening to episodes and I'm like, do I want kids? Like, oh my <laughs> God, I hear Andrea's kids screaming and I'm like, oh Lord. But then I think about how many resources I have at my fingertips and what a blessing it is and the people that we're connecting our listeners with. And so some of it can be overwhelming, but I hope that everyone listening just feels like they're never alone. And there's so many wonderful resources out there for free, which yep. is amazing. hundred percent. Yeah. And that's the beauty of social media too. Mm -hmm. Really. Yeah, yep. absolutely. All right. Our last question. What is one thing you wish you would have known sooner? Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I think the pediatric stuff. I love, love, love babies. And yeah, I think just going through chiropractic. I've been in so many different realms of chiropractic in my years here. This is the first. And I'm not just saying this because I work like I work at Chiro for Mom, but that's why I'm I'm there because I have three children and my husband's job is crazy. So, you know, I could easily just say, no, I'm going to just put this on the back burner and stay at home with my children. But I think that it's just that niche market that we're in with pediatrics. I wish I would have known that longer or earlier because you know, I've been in every realm of chiropractic where it's come three times a week for six weeks and then two times and then one time and just that ego that a lot of chiropractors have. And I mean, I'm not speaking just for myself, but I'm, everybody will kind of say that. So I wish like, yeah, I wish that I would have just had that niche a little bit sooner. And I think I would have fallen in love with it a little bit more earlier. That's awesome. I'm glad that you found that for yourself. And we hope that for everyone to kind of keep digging into, you know, oh, I'm kind of interested in this, just kind of keep going and, and trying until you're on fire about what you're doing. Like you said, like, you could go different routes, but you love what you do and you're good at it. I think once you get to that spot, it feels so good. Mm -hmm. you know? And it is out there. Don't stop searching until you find it because you deserve to find it and you will find it. Thank you so much, Dr. Kayla, for being with us today. This was eye-opening for me. I'm actually really excited for this year because I'm going to get into chiropractic and try it with my family. And so thank you for even more information, for the resources, for your podcast, and for being with us today. Yes. Thank you so much. It, I always love when people speak about something that really helped me and help other people see why it was so instrumental in my healing and still is. So thank you for the work you do and, and for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. And then the last thing we do is send our listeners off with a piece of gold, your favorite quote. Would you like to share your piece of gold? Yes. Yeah, so it's from Alexander Hamilton and it's those who stand for nothing fall for anything. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold.